Walt Disney's Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. One snowy night in a castle far away, a little princess was born. Her parents named her Snow White. As the years passed, the child grew up to be a lovely young woman. Her beauty and her gentle nature won the hearts of all who knew her. After Snow White's father died, she lived in the castle with her stepmother, the queen. The queen was very beautiful, but she was cold and heartless. She was also jealous of Snow White's beauty. So she dressed the princess in rags and forced her to work as a maid. The queen's most prized possession was a magic mirror. Every day she would stand in front of it and ask, mirror, mirror on the wall, who was the fairest one of all? And every day the mirror would reply, you, O oh queen, are the fairest in the land. While the queen spent her time admiring herself in the mirror, Snow White worked long hours in the castle. She always did her chores with a smile, often singing while she worked. One day, as she drew water from the well, she sang a song about her fondest dream. She wished a handsome prince would come to the castle and carry her away. Please make my wish come true, whispered Snow White. No sooner had she said these words than a handsome prince appeared next to her. Snow White gazed shyly into the prince's eyes. The prince fell in love instantly, but Snow White suddenly became frightened and fled to the safety of the castle. That evening, as usual, the queen asked the mirror, mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all? But this time her mirror replied, her lips blood red, her hair like night, her skin like snow, her name Snow White. The queen was so furious that she immediately called for her huntsmen. Tomorrow, take Snow White deep into the forest and kill her, she commanded. Then she gave the huntsman a jeweled box and told him to bring her proof that he had obeyed the order. The huntsman feared the evil queen and promised to do as she wished. The next morning, the huntsman took Snow White deep into the forest. He watched as the princess stopped to place a baby bird back in its nest. At that moment, the huntsman knew he could never harm this kind-hearted girl. He fell to his knees and begged her forgiveness. My dear princess, he said, you are not safe. The queen is jealous. She has ordered me to kill you, but I could never hurt you. Quickly, he added, run into the forest and never return. Snow White was frightened by his words, but did as she was told. She ran and ran until she could run no farther. Lost and alone, she sank to the ground and sobbed herself to sleep. The huntsman placed an animal's heart inside the box the queen had given him and presented it to her that night. The evil woman rejoiced, for she believed the huntsman had carried out her order. Now I am the fairest one of all, she exclaimed triumphantly. When she awoke the next morning, Snow White found herself surrounded by forest animals. Curious birds, rabbits, squirrels, chipmunks, and even a mother deer and her fawn crept up for a closer look. Snow White laughed. She didn't feel lonely any longer. Do you know of a place where I can stay? Snow White asked her woodland friends. In response, two little birds chirped excitedly and began to tug gently at her cape. Snow White followed her new friends to a tiny cottage nestled among the trees. Oh, it's just like a doll's house, Snow White exclaimed. 
Since no one seemed to be home, Snow White stepped inside. Oh my, what a terrible mess, she cried. She stared in wonder at the seven little chairs. Seven children must live here, she said. I'll just tidy up a bit and surprise them. Perhaps they'll let me stay for a while. Snow White began to clean the cottage. The animals helped her sweep and dust and wash and scrub. Soon the cottage was neat and tidy. Snow White went upstairs where she found seven little beds lined up in a row. Each one had a name carved on it. What funny names for children, remarked Snow White as she read the names aloud. Happy, Dopey, Grumpy, Sneezy, Bashful, Doc, and Sleepy. Then she yawned. I'm a little sleepy myself, she added. Snow White lay across the tiny beds and promptly fell asleep. Meanwhile, seven little men were hurrying home from a hard day's work in the diamond mine. They didn't know it, but they had a surprise waiting for them. For these were the seven dwarfs who lived in the cottage where Snow White lay sleeping. They sang merrily as they walked through the forest. Doc led the way with the lantern. Behind him were Grumpy, Happy, Sleepy, Sneezy, Bashful, and last of all, Dopey. As they neared the house, the dwarfs noticed that something was different. The windows were clean. Cautiously, they crept inside. Everything was neat and tidy. Just as I thought, cried Doc, someone's been here. M, m, maybe it's a goblin, said Bashful. And m, m, maybe it's still here. Only one way to find out, said Grumpy. So up the stairs they went. But instead of a goblin, the dwarfs found Snow White fast asleep on their beds. It's a girl, declared Doc. She's beautiful, added Happy. Snow White was awakened by their voices. Oh, she cried when she saw them. Why, you are not children at all. You are little men. That's right, said Doc, but who are you? Snow White introduced herself and told them all about the Wicked Queen. You can stay with us, said Doc. We won't let anything happen to you. All the other dwarfs agreed. Back at the castle, the queen once again consulted her magic mirror. Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest one of all, she asked. She was sure she knew the answer. But the mirror replied, over the seven jeweled hills beyond the seventh fall in the cottage of the seven dwarfs dwells Snow White, fairest one of all. The queen was outraged. The huntsman lied, she shouted knocking the jeweled box to the ground. Now I will have to take care of her myself. The queen ran down the stairs to a dark dungeon room where she kept an assortment of enchanted powders and bubbling liquids. She quickly mixed herself a magic potion. When she drank the potion, she instantly turned into an ugly old woman. Then she cast a magic spell over a luscious red apple. One bite of this poison apple and Snow White will sleep forever, she cackled with glee. That night at the little cottage, Snow White cooked a special meal for the dwarfs. Supper's almost ready, she told them. You'll just have time to wash. Wash, chorused the dwarfs. They had almost forgotten what the word meant, but Snow White was firm so they all went outside to scrub themselves clean. Even Grumpy got a soaking. After dinner, it was time for some fun. The dwarfs played their musical instruments and took turns dancing with Snow White. Dopey climbed on Sneezy's shoulders and covered them both with a long coat. Now he was as tall as Snow White, but not for long. One sneeze from Sneezy sent them both tumbling to the floor.
before they set off for work the next morning. Snow White gave each dwarf a goodbye kiss. Beware of strangers, warned Doc. No telling what that wicked queen might do. Don't worry, replied Snow White. I'll be careful. After the dwarfs left, Snow White began making pies. All alone, my pet? She heard someone ask. Snow White turned and saw an old woman at the window. How would you like to taste one of my nice apples? They're wishing apples, you know, the old woman said. They do look good, replied Snow White. The animals recognized the queen at once, but Snow White didn't. Snow White took the apple and made a wish. As soon as she bit into the apple, she fell to the floor. Only love's first kiss could wake the sleeping princess. Ha ha ha, cackled the queen. Now, my pretty princess, you will sleep forever. The animals hurried to the mine. They tugged at the dwarf's clothes until the little men understood that something was terribly wrong. The dwarfs jumped onto the deer and headed for the cottage. On their way, they spotted the old woman and recognized the queen in her disguise. Follow her, Grumpy shouted. So they chased her all the way up a steep cliff. The queen reached the top of the cliff and was trapped on a narrow ledge. She was about to push a huge boulder onto the dwarfs when a bolt of lightning struck the ledge. With a horrible scream, she fell to the jagged rocks below. The wicked queen was gone forever. When the dwarfs finally arrived home, they found Snow White asleep on the floor. Nothing they did could wake her from her sleep. With tears in their eyes, they gently laid Snow White on a bed. The next day, the dwarfs built a golden casket for Snow White. It was covered with glass so that they could always see her. Then they carried the casket to a peaceful glen in the depths of the forest, where the tall pine trees carpeted the ground with their fragrant needles. For many days, the dwarfs stayed by Snow White's side, hoping she would wake up, but Snow White slept on and on. Meanwhile, the lonely prince had been searching for Snow White far and wide. One day, he heard of a beautiful maiden who slept in a golden casket deep in the forest, surrounded by seven little men. Finally, he came upon Snow White he lifted the heavy glass lid. My beautiful Snow White, at last I have found you, he whispered. Then he kissed the sleeping princess. Snow White opened her eyes. The spell was broken. The prince gathered Snow White in his arms and lifted her onto his horse. This time, Snow White was not afraid of her handsome prince. Goodbye, she called out to the dwarfs. You have been good, kind friends. I will never forget you. Snow White kept her promise. She included the dwarfs in all the festivities at the castle, where she and her prince lived happily ever after. The end.